today, I think we are dealing with the church growth, church growth challenge. Uh, this is part three. But today, um, I think that um, in Chosa, they say something very powerful. They say, they talk about what is the need, the need thing. You know, today uh, I, I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, to speak about the significance of fathers in the kingdom of God. So I want to speak about that, the significance of fathers in the kingdom of God. So don't ask me why didn't I speak on, on the Mother's Day. Please don't, 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 don't go there. But let's, 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 let's tackle that because um, the reason that um, today I wanted to speak because fathers are a foundation right? Uh, they are not the building, they are not the windows, they are not the walls, they are, they are not even the roof, but they are foundation, right? So I'm, I'm going to explain that to you. Um, I'm going to give you a number of scriptures, that's why I don't have much uh, reference scripture. If you want reference scriptures, just type on your Google and say, our Father who art in heaven, then you will you will get the reference scripture. So fathers are a foundation. They are a foundation of life on earth. So that is why mothers are more recognized and more adored than fathers. It is not because that's wrong. That is right. The reason why fathers are rare to be recognized, it's because fathers are a foundation of life on earth. When you come to this building, the first thing you will see is the walls, the light, the door. Uh, the carpet and the stage and everything that you can see. But nobody comes to the building to see the foundation. Um, are you getting me? Uh, I know that I'll, I'll go slowly, maybe kind of like boring, but maybe what I'm going to say is important. Nobody comes to the building to see the foundation. People come to the building to see the walls, the paint, the doors, the furniture. Uh, they come to see different things in the building, but nobody has ever come to appreciate the foundation. Only the architect textures will know the importance of the foundation. Even when the foundation is hidden, but the foundation carries what you see. What you see and what you appreciate is carried by the foundation. If the foundation can tumble and fall and crack and get destroyed, the building you see and all the beauty will come tumbling down. It will be destroyed. So fathers are the most dangerous people on earth. They can destroy you, they can build you. They don't need to be there to make an impact in your life. When they are there, they can make a positive impact. When they are there, they can make a negative impact. And when they are absent, they can still affect you. I'm not sure if I'm boring you. 
So fathers, the reason why God, God, this is, I, I, I get it this morning. The reason why God probably preferred to, to reveal himself as a father, not a mother, it's because he is hidden. We cannot see him, but we can see his effect and we can see his, uh, his impact. We can also see his results, but we can't cognitively recognize him. But that we don't see him does not mean that he's there. He's not there. So if God showed himself in the word as a father. And the most people who are struggling with exposing, revealing themselves, his fathers. The mothers are in your face. Hmm. You get me? Pa mothers are in your face. The mothers are talking a lot. They are not wrong. They are them. Right? So mothers are talking a lot. They are in your face and everything, blah, blah, and all of that. But fathers, most of the time, they speak once in a while. I want you to understand them this morning. The reason why I want you to understand them is because even when we get Father God in the Bible, he does not speak a lot. He sends people to speak on his behalf. He sends Paul, Matthew, Peter, Isaiah, Jeremiah. He did not come by himself. Because a father does not speak a lot. If you check in the life of Jesus, how many times did the father speak to Jesus? It's only two times. When Jesus was baptized, the Bible says that then the voice came from heaven like a thunder, you know, came from heaven and said, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. That was the first time. The second time was when Jesus went with his three disciples into the, on, on the mountain of trans, uh, transfiguration where Jesus Christ was transfigured and then they saw Elijah and Moses and then the voice came and said, this is my son, obey him or listen to him or something like that. Are you hearing that? But only two times, only two times the father spoke. Fathers are not people who speak a lot because fathers are not connected to your sentiment and feelings, but fathers are connected to your purpose. So fathers are purposeful, not emotional. That's why if you get a message from a father that says, I love you, it's once in a while. <laughs> uh, no, am I boring you? It's once in a while. And if you have it, save it. Because you don't know when it's going to come again. But with the mother, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know. Uh, mother is daily. Father is I'm looking for the English word. I'm trying to think. Are you get it? So father is period because kind of. Are you getting that? But 
You have to understand that a father is your foundation. You carry his DNA. You carry his blood. Your identity comes from the father, not from the mother. Your mother was a carrier. Fathers are foundation of life. Mothers are incubators of life. But mothers can only incubate what fathers have given. So, whether your father is good or bad, thank God for him. Because without him, you wouldn't exist. So if he's a bad father, just thank him for his seed. Because you are the product of his seed. That, that, that's it. So you have to be grateful. Are you hearing that? Whether you have a relationship with him or you don't have a relationship with him, whether he's a loving father or a negative father or ugly father or bad man, whatever that it can be, but honor him and appreciate him. Now, so fathers are foundation. Then number two, then fathers have responsibilities and duties. They have responsibilities and duties. Fathers are responsible and they have duties from God. The first responsibility that fathers have is to love and care for their children is to love and care for their children. No, I did not say that is to tell their children they love them. But I said is to love because love can be present without being said. In fact, if you are observant enough, you can hear the silence of love. So fathers are called to care, to love, and to care for their children. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 31, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 31, the Bible says, and in the desert where you have seen, okay, where you have seen how the Lord, your God, carried you just as a man carries his son all along the way that you came. Until you arrived at this place. So, now, the, the Bible portrays God as a father who carried Israel in the desert. When you face your desert, you need a father. When you face your desert, you need a father. I'm telling you, mothers can do to a certain degree. But when life puts you in the desert, one word from the Father can carry you for years. They don't speak a lot, but one word from them. You know, let me tell you something. I was, you know, my, my mother's marriage and my father's marriage was not a good one, right? Right? So I grew up and uh, having certain dissatisfaction with my father, you know, like many kids do. And uh, in my later years, in my 30s, then God saved my father. Some of you know the story. And, uh, and I became an instrument for my father's salvation, which was great. Then I became his bishop. And then we used to fight because he, loved, he, he, he wanted me to put a tie every Sunday. And I, I did not like a tie much because when I preach, when I get high and the spirit is moving, that tie, uh, you know, it's, it's not good for me. So he would say to me, what kind of a bishop are you? You must put a tie, something like that. Okay. But I, I remember one day that when I was, uh, we, we did a, a, a bishop celebration, my father Bishop said, he was on the wheelchair because he was amputated both of his legs, right? Because of sugar diabetes, right? And uh, I remember very well, 
uh, I don't know what year it was, or 2009 or something like that. I remember that uh, we're in the tent in Kuguletu and the church was going well and things like that. We had Rola Kulela, we had uh, different speakers coming, Solomashang and other people. So then, then on the wheelchair, then he called me, you know, and I, I went to him. It was during the service and he called me and I, and, and, and I left everything, then I went to him. When I went to him, he spoke to my ears. He said to me, the way God has lifted you, then he said, I am honored. That's, that's all he said. He did not say that he loves me. But he said, when he looks at me, he's honored. And for me, that was all. So that's, that's what he said. He, he has never said anything, you know, we've argued sometimes, you know, and say, uh, you know, you, you, did you never told me that you love me. He said, no, 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 I love you more than you love yourself. More than you love yourself. But it's only when I pick it up. Okay? So, that is care. And that is love. Even when it's not put in words. Learn the gestures of your father when he says he, lo he loves you, even when his mouth did not say it. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm boring you this morning. Learn. Men have the language of love that's not uttered by words. And it takes a person who's observant to be able to see that. A man can give you 10 rand to say, I love you. Can give you a gift to say, I love you. Can shake your hand to say I love you can say to you oh that's good to say I love you. he can say that's good to say I love you but 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 if you don't catch it you will think he's not man speak in riddles that's why every Sunday I have to express the love of God to you because when you read it by yourself, you will not see it. I need to interpret it because the Father cannot say it directly. I have to unlock it for you to feel it. Hmm. Can I tell you something? If God was a mother, we will not come to church. Is that clear to you? If God was there, mother, we will not come to church. We'll be feeling irate and feeling euphoric every day. Like uh, <laughs> We will not need to come to church. But we come to church because God is a father. And God is hidden. And God speaks in riddles. And those riddles become revelation. So we have to come to hear his revelation. And his revelation is not exactly direct from him. He had to choose man to represent him and to interpret him. So what I do every Sunday is to interpret him to you. Because God is a man. He is not in your face every day like your mother doing your hair every day washing you and dressing you every day he is not like that but he cares are you getting this so the bible says that you know that god is a father as a son carries 
His son, God carried you in the desert. The responsibility of the father is to carry you when life becomes a desert. When life becomes hard, the father is there to carry you. Psalms 103 verse 13 to 14. Psalms 103 verse 13 to 14. The Bible says, like a father petters his children. Like, you know, pet, like love, right? Like a father like a father patties his children, so, so the Lord patties who, those who fear him. Can you see that? The father does what? Patties. The father, uh, no, Peters, uh, and I think I'm pronouncing it wrong. The father Peters his children. Okay? Like a father Peters his children, so the Lord peters those who fear him. For he knows we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Can you see that? Why does God pity us? Why does God pity us as a father? He understands that we are formed formed and we are dust he understands that we can get ourselves dirty at times he understands dust means that weak dust means that frail dust means that you can make mistakes dust means that you can embarrass yourself dust means that you can disappoint yourself but the bible says that god pities you as a father to pity you it means that he accepts you as you are so you see that so that is a father fathers do not condemn fathers pity fathers accept fathers will never lose you to the enemy like God sent his son and his son died on the cross for you. So God will do everything. He will never want to lose you to an enemy. He will do whatever it takes because he's a father. Right? Why? Because he cares. And why? Because he loves, he loves you. As the Bible says that in John 3 verse 16, it says that God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son. So we are loved by the father. Luke chapter 11 Luke chapter 11, verse 11. Luke chapter 11, verse 11 to 13. It says, If a son of any father among you ask for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will he give him a snake instead of a fish? If you being, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will the heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him so the bible says fathers care so in other words you will not ask for stone and they you will not ask for bread and they give you stone you will not ask for fish and they give you snake right and Jesus says that he speaks to the evil people he says if then being evil You know how to give good gifts to your children. So the Bible says, even evil fathers care for their children. Even witches, people who witch, you know, who are in witchcraft. Even Satanists, they love the sons, the children that came out of their loans. So then the Bible says, if you, as evil as you are, care for your children, then how much more your heavenly father? 
And it says something very important. It says that your heavenly father, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those? You know what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the core being of God. The Bible says that God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So when God gives you the Holy Spirit, he is giving you himself. There's nothing else you can ask after God has given you the Holy Spirit. Because God is spirit and when he gives the Holy Spirit, he is giving of himself and there's nothing else that God can give. So you get it? And the Bible calls him a heavenly father. In other words, you have to recognize that when you walk on earth, you have a father in heaven. You have a heavenly father. You have a father that is seen, that is not seen by naked eyes, but he exists. He has all power. He has all strength. He has all things that you can imagine in life, but he's your father. All right? So fathers is the people who care. In the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 21, the Bible says, Father, Colossians 3 verse 21, the Bible says, Fathers do not provoke your children so that they will not be discouraged. In other words, treat them gentle. If you have, a, if you're a father in this house, listen, the Bible says that do not provoke your children. What does it mean? It means that do not provoke something negative out of your children. Do not provoke them to anger. Do not provoke them to, to bad behavior. Do not provoke them to discouragement. To, because when they are discouraged from you, they can be drug addicts. When they are discouraged from you, they can, be, they can become anything negative as a result of your provocation. So the Bible says that now we don't have to provoke our kids. No matter how angry we are, we can't take that on our children. No matter how discouraged we are, we can't take that to our children. You see, one of the things that I've tried by all means, sometimes failed, but tried by all means, is to appear strong to my kids in my time of weakness. Is to cry alone, wipe the tears, and put a smile when appearing to them. It, no, it, does not mean, it does not mean that they don't see that. They may see it, but they may not see me doing it. I'm not sure if you're a father, you understand what I'm trying to say to you. Okay? So kids know when things are bad at home. Things know, the kids know when things are bad at home. They know when things are not going all right. They know everything like that, but they still look to you. It's amazing. It's tough to be a father. They still look to you even when things are bad in, at home and things are bad in their lives and things are bad wherever they are, but they still look to you, but you still have to take the bad and internalize it and not make it obvious even though you go through it. That, does it make sense to you? You see, so for me, I think, I think, I think, I think, that, that, that's the tough thing about being a father. That's the tough thing about being a father because you don't want to, to produce children who are weak, children who cannot face life's challenges, children who can not uh, 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 face life as it comes. You, you don't want to produce that. So, um, you have to. That's your caring as a father. When you hide your wounds, but show your scars. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, I know I'm not preaching this morning. I'm just talking. As a father, you have a responsibility of hiding your wounds because kids 
cannot take it when you bleed. I wish, I, are you hearing me? To have a bleeding father is the world coming to an end. But when your father shows you the scars, you get strength to make it in life. We show scars to our children, but we don't show them bleeding. So that, that's what it means to be a father. <sighs> God. Number three. Fathers are called by God to discipline their children. You know, so not only to love, not only to care, and that's... <laughs> Can I tell you something? Your mothers, mothers don't discipline. Mothers shout. Did you hear what I said to you? Mothers do what? Yeah, mothers shout. You do something wrong, they will shout at you. But fathers discipline. And there's a, dif there's a difference between discipline and shouting. Fathers speak one word that will break your heart and get to their room. Fathers have just a look. They'll give you a look and you know you're out of line. Fathers, you ask the question and they don't answer. Because you are being stupid. Because you are out of line. Because you are immature. They just discipline you sometimes with their silence. Not because they hate you, but they love you enough to discipline you. Why fathers should discipline their children? Are you still around? Why fathers should discipline their children? In the book of Proverbs chapter 22 verse 15. Proverbs 22 verse 15. I'm not sure if you're going to like this scripture. It says, foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. To be a child is to be foolish. Did it say wisdom? It said what? Foolishness is bound where? In the heart of a child. Right? Of a child. The rod of correction will drive it far from him. All children are foolish. No matter how much you love your child, she is foolish. Your child is foolish. And listen. It's not an insult. It's a state. The mind of a child is not fully formed. So foolishness is the order of the day with a child. So foolishness is not wrong with a child. It's just what the child is. That's why when you speak with a child, you have to come down to his level. You have to come down to his understanding. What makes you to do that is because of foolishness. And somebody say, no, this, you know, the pastor insulted me this Sunday, called my child a fool or something. No, I did not say your child is a fool. To have foolishness does not mean you're a fool. Okay? So now, understand that your children, uh, psychologists, they tell us that 
The mind is fully formed at what age? Is it 21 or something like that? But 15 years, the, ch- the, the brain is still growing. So that's why teenagers are the most stupid people on earth. And teenagers with that half mind, they think they know everything. Then they look at you as a mother and a father and they think you are going nuts. And the reason they do that is because psychologically they are not yet fully brain formed. And they don't even know it. So if you're a teenager now, I'm trying to tell you that your cleverness is your foolishness. <laughs> you know, listen to me. That's why when you're a teenager, your mother and your parents, they get on your nerves every time, all the time. They get on your nerves every time. Why? Because you think you know. You think you are there. You think you are old. You think you are mature. But it's immaturity that makes you to feel Wrapped off negatively all the time is foolishness. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, teenager, sorry, man. I'm sorry that this morning I have to tell you the truth about yourself. So that's why when you are young, you see things halfway. That's why when you are old, you look back and say, I was stupid. I can't believe I thought that way. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I involved myself in that because now you have matured. So please tell your children that they are foolish. And tell them it's not bad to be foolish is only wrong when you don't recognize it. All teenagers say I'm foolish. Okay, sorry, no. Let's, 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 let's not say that. Are you understanding that? Now, in the book of Proverbs chapter 13 verse 24, Proverbs chapter 13 verse 24, it says, he who does not use His rod hates his son. But he who loves him disciplines him carefully. Oh, it says promptly there. But my translation says carefully. So he who does not love his son. In other words, if you don't love your children, can I tell you something? When you let your children to sleep at the time they want to sleep, when you let your children to do whatever they want to do at whatever time, when you let your children to dress whatever way they want to dress, if you let your children to le- to dress anyway, stomach out and thighs out and things like that, you are an irresponsible father. If you love your children, you will discipline them. Children can expose their stomach and belly to a certain age. But when you continue to do that as adults and living in your house, then you are a weak father or a weak parent. I'm looking at Tana. Now she can do crop and all those things now but there's an age she cannot do it under my house under my roof never never she can't be at puberty stage and still dress like she is five years not in my house yeah maybe when she's 15 she can go live in her house not in my house So are you hearing that? So when she goes out of my house, she goes out on my approval that she is fit to represent me in the society. (laughs) 
your child, if your child misrepresents you under your roof, you have shown your weakness to the whole world that you are not a man enough. Let alone about wives. I know some wives, they... <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. This, this, is not, this, this is not a couple session. Let's leave it alone. <laughs> so the one, who, it, it says that you hate your children or you hate your son. You hate your children if... You don't use a rod. If you don't have a standard that your children must keep. If you don't have a rod, a measurement. If you don't have limits, if you don't have discipline. Your children at 12 o'clock, they're still on their cell phone. So, you are weak. <laughs> you are a banana father. <laughs> you are a banana father. Number four. Fathers must instruct their children, not now discipline, love and care and discipline their children, but now fathers must instruct their children. So we see Moses as a type of a father in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2. The Bible says you must not, oh sorry, the Bible says that, um, the Bible says, you must not add to the words which I command you. Did you, did you hear that? You shall not add to the word which I command you. Not take it, not take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Who commands? The Father commands. Commands on behalf of God. And you shall not twist my words, if my no is no, you can make it yes. <laughs> is it clear? So Moses says, my no is no. Let me not find you making it yes. Here is the problem. Oh God, I can't preach today, I'm just talking. Here's the problem. We are living in the society where there's no many challenges. There. So yesterday we had a wonderful time. You know, Anel did a very great job with the, with the teenagers yesterday. I spoke to them and some professionals, doctor, lawyer, uh, CAs were there from our church speaking to them. Now here's the issue. We are in the society where there's many challenges. And one of the challenges that is very detrimental to us this day is sexual identity. Where a child is a girl but feels that she has a boy inside. Or a child is a boy but she feels girlish. Now, listen to me, please. I am not criticizing the child because that is a condition. That is where the child finds himself or herself. And please, as a church, we must leave this thing of judging and judging and being hypocritical and things like that. It's a condition. Nobody wakes up and chooses to be gay. Nobody wakes up and chooses to be lesbian. They find themselves in that condition. 
Is the condition right? I did not say it's right. But it's real. Are you hearing me? So the father commands. The father instructs. The father corrects. The father stands by the principle. I see, I saw a man, some of you may know him. He's called, I think it's Mag Magic Johnson. Is it Magic Johnson? Yes. Um, a full, uh, 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 um, uh, what is it, basketball player. You know, you know, like Michael Jordan and things like that. He's a wealthy man. So he discovered that his son was gay. And he couldn't take it. It was difficult for him to take it. Because you have a boy and you are raising a man. Then the man says, I'm a woman. It's frustrating. So he went through frustration to the point that he accepted the condition of his child. And now he's advocating for children who find themselves in that condition. And then, for me, that's wrong. He is a Christian. He is a believer. He is saved. Now, parents who are saved, let me talk to you for a moment. If your child finds themselves in that condition, number one, don't judge. Right? Number two, accept your child. But number three, make it clear, make clear of what you believe and what the Bible says. Because acceptance does not mean approval. I wish I could talk to you. I wish I could talk to you. I wish I could talk to you. Are you what I'm trying to say to you? So in other words, I'm saying, my boy, I understand that you are going through this. My girl, I understand that you are going through this. But listen, this is what the word of God says. And this is what I believe. I am with you in the process until God gives you help. Until God delivers you. Until God changes you. Until God. But you're always my son. You're always my baby girl. You are always my child. I will never neglect you. I will never, I will never reject you. I will never put you away. You are with me and I am with you. But that I am with you does not mean I have a stamp of approval. Are you hearing me? Yeah. The, the, the reason why I'm saying this today is because... Oh God, I know I'm on Facebook that I'm going to be in problem. They, 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 they're going to fry me. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to air fry. And <laughs> but listen to me, please. I'm saying this, that the reason why I'm saying this is because that community seeks approval. And they seek approval by force. And if you don't approve them, they call it homophobia. But there's a difference between approval and love. I can love you even when I don't approve what you do. Listen, I can disagree. And still love you. I can disagree and still not approve, but I love you. Love exists even in couples. Nobody has a partner that does everything right the way you want them to do. Some other things you don't like, but you still love. You cannot like and still love you can you can you can find yourself where you don't agree 
but it does not mean that your love has stopped are you hearing me so what I'm saying now I'm not being homophobic I'm not being homophobic I love some easy I don't have a problem with him I watch his videos I don't have a problem with him. Do I approve his lifestyle? I don't. Why? It's my democratic right as a South African to choose what I believe and what I don't believe. As much as Somizi has a right to believe what he believes. But that we don't agree does not mean we should not love each other. So I love all the gay people. I love uh, the homosexual people. I love uh, the lesbians. You know, we had a great testimony in this church. You know, I'm still speaking about our father in that way. You know, we had a great, you know, for over 10 years I had um, one of my baby girls in the church who was lesbian for many years and uh, even cohabited with another girl. They were a couple. They were coming to church. Yeah. And uh, they would sit in the church together. They're a couple anyway. Mm. So, I never had a problem with that. Some people think that if you're a pastor, let us and gentlemen, let me tell you something. We don't preach by sight. We preach by revelation. I cannot have a person sitting here and that person is gay or what, then I begin to, 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 to preach against homosexuality and things. No, no, I'm not going to do that. Preaching is by the revelation of the spirit. It's not by flesh and it's not by sight. So they would come to church and then, you know, for, for years, come to church. Right? And, 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 and I loved it. I loved it. And she loved me as, as her spiritual daddy. I, I did not have a problem with that. But then one day, one day, we had a function in the church and she came for the first time dressed in a dress not in jeans not in pants and she had no a, a, a bag handbag for the first time and I was worried I said to her what happened to you? I said what happened to you? you know what she said? she said daddy I'm delivered. But did I judge her? Huh? Did I preach about her? No. I just loved her. She knew my stance. She respected it. I knew what she was struggling with and respected her as a person because Jesus died for person to this state she's still delivered you understand that so in other words a command as a father you don't change it because of circumstances or because of emotions and because of feelings because of sentiments you don't change it you stick with it no matter what is that clear to you now uh, some of you don't understand it a father can advise you about something that you should not do that is struggling with Did you hear what I said to you? A father may be struggling with the same thing that he's telling you that you must not do. 
Mm. Are you hearing me? A father can have a cigarette and say, don't ever try smoking. <laughs> Are you hearing that? And one day he sees you or he smells you smelling cigarette, then he has fits against you, but he's smoking. But he tells you, are you smoking? And he gets angry at you. He is not a hypocrite. He is responsible. You don't get me. Are you getting me? I'm saying he is responsible. Because fathers, sometimes they fight the things that we should not fight. And they struggle with things that we should not struggle with. And they try to conquer the things. Oh, why, oh, 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 oh. If your father is a drunkard, it means you should not be a drunkard. Your father is in spiritual warfare with what you should not become. Are you here? I'm trying to say to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you will be a drunkard, but you will never put a beer and drink with you. Responsible fathers will not do that. He can smoke, but he will never give you escape. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 13 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 1. The Bible says, a wise son. A wise what? A wise son listen to his father's instruction. But a scorner does not listen to rebuke. Guys, can you see what happens? Your father is a father by words first before actions. So a father will rebuke you. Words. But the Bible says that a wise son will listen to his father's what? Instruction. I know some people may, people born most of the time, it's a good, you know, if in, in, in the father's or parental workshop, it's good that children are doing more, are doing what we do. You know? Not just what we say, but what we do, what we do. But when we are with children, we must tell them that it's important what your parents say. But when we speak to parents, we'll say it's important what you do. To parents, not to children. Because even Solomon, the wisest man ever, who had 700 wives, no, in fact, there were a thousand wives, 700 wives and 300 side cheeks. <laughs> he said, he who finds a wife, he did not say wives. He said, he who finds what? Has found a, a good thing and has obtained favor. And then you look at Solomon and you say, ah, ah, you are saying one wife. How many do you have? <laughs> How many do you have? Listen, man, he speaks as a father. <laughs> and as fathers, okay, sometimes, oh, oh, God. You know, I can't preach this morning. As fathers, sometimes we can speak from our mistakes. Sometimes we can speak from our mistakes, our mistake point of view, speaking to you, hoping that you'll be better than us. 
hoping that you will be more disciplined than us. Hoping that you will be more behaving than us. We wish you better. We wish you to have more money than us, to have more opportunity than us, to have more success than us. There's no father that competes with, head, with his daughter or his son. No. We want you guys to beat us in life. Are you hearing me? Even as a spiritual father in the church, I don't wish me to be the wealthiest person in the church. Because if I have you more worthy, more wealthy, and more rich, there's no way I can be poor. You get it? There's no way. It's just impossible. Now, oh God. Listen to the rebuke. Oh, now church today, they don't like that. They don't like the rebuke. No, they like the encouragement. You shall, you shall, you shall, you shall God shall give you houses that you did not build, you know. <laughs> God knows the plans that he has for you. Uh, no, don't say anything else because the, the, they don't like that. But the Bible says that a good son receives rebuke, right? Number five, fathers have rights. Fathers have rights. And the rights, one of the rights of the fathers is to be honored. A father must be honored. Whether he's a bad father or a good father, an angry father or an impossible father, it's his right to be honored according to the word of God. So Exodus chapter 20 verse 12, Exodus 20 verse 12 says, Honor your father and mother so that your time may be long in the land. Did you get that? So that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord God is giving you. Do you get that? Now, do you see what the Bible says there? No, the Bible does not say that so that your, 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 your days will be longer on earth. Did, did you get it? It says long away, long way. Upon the land. Which land? The Lord is giving you, right? This speaks of success. No, it doesn't. No, no, no. There are people who had problems with their fathers and, and, what, and they, they live up to 90 years. On earth. But in poverty. You get it? But the Bible says that you live long in success. You live long in Canaan. The promised land that God is giving you. In other words, when you honor your parents, you honor your father, then the Bible says you're going to be successful. One of my sons who has made millions is, is at Rafa Fellowship Center. He only discovered his father while he's married already with kids. He honors his father. He supports his father. He supports a man that was never there. A man that was never there. God has made him to be a moneyed magnet. He honors the man that he missed when he was a child. When other people said daddy, he did not know who was his daddy because he was not there to be found. But when he found him, he dealt with his anger. He dealt with the neglect. He dealt with the years of loneliness and things like that. And some of you, you need to deal with that. When you honor your father, your fa especially your father. The Bible says your father and your mother. Then you'll have, you shall have long life. 
Long life in success. Leviticus number 19, uh, Leviticus 19, 3. Leviticus 19, verse 3. The Bible says, Everyone of you shall revere his mother and his father. Do you know revere? Hey. Revere his mother and father and keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord. You, you know, do you know what, it, what does it mean to revere? Do you know what it means? To be revered is to be like scared. Like, like scared. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. If you don't fear your parents, you have a problem. When you speak to your father, there must be that thing in your heart. It saves you. It protects you. I'm not sure you get me. Are you getting me? Huh? Did I bore, did I bore you from the beginning to an end now? Am I boring you? Okay. Are you hearing me? You must have something. When your father is coming, you must have that. There's one thing that keeps me with my spiritual father. We sit with him. We talk with him, we love with him, but I still, I fear that man. Even when he hugs me, he tells, my father tells me that he loves me. I know, but I still fear him. And I will be worried one day if that fear gets out of my heart, then I will be worried. Are you hearing me? Your connection to your father must be fear and love. Oh, what a contrast. Guys, don't you know that men are fearful? You don't know that? Huh? You don't know that men are fearful? Oh, let me make an example. If you don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example and you'll get me very well. I'll, I'll give you the last point now. Listen, don't you know that men are fearful? Let's say that 12 a.m. you are walk, 12 a.m. in the midnight, you are walking along. And you come across a woman. How many of you will run away? Come across a woman at night. There's no fear with woman. But let's say you're walking at 12 a.m. and there's a man coming, tall man coming towards you. Huh? You what? You may tremble and what? Men are fearful. Yeah. Men, they're not even fearful. Men are ugly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we were never made for beauty. You have to understand that. If you don't know the man is ugly, look at your husband when, when he's naked. Men are ugly by nature. We are, listen guys, <laughs> I'm telling you the truth today. We are ugly by nature. We were never made for beauty. We were made for dignity, not beauty. When it comes to beauty, count us out. That's why there's no beautiful man. That's why it's wrong when a man tries to be beautiful. <laughs> Are you getting it? <laughs> Ephesians 6 verse 1 to 2. Ephesians 6 verse 1 to 2. The Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right Obey. Why should you obey your parent? Because they wish you well. The love of the father is forever. There is no divorce with the love of the father. But when you get married tomorrow, you may be divorced with the love of your life. If we really speak the truth, the love of our lives is our parent. I mean, if we speak the truth. 
But if we make ourselves happy in marriage, oh, you are the only thing. <laughs> oh, you are. <laughs> you are the <laughs> best thing that is. <laughs> no, it's good. You know, enough for marriage is good. You can. <sighs> now you can say all what you want to say. It's, it's okay. But your parents, they will love you when you are married, love you when you are divorced, love you when you are a drunkard, love you when you are on drugs, love you when you are in prison, love you. No, the parental love and the father's love is forever. That's why people who preach judgment, they don't understand the love of the father. The father loves whether you are at home or you are a prodigal son, whether you want to eat with pigs, whether you are dirty and whether you have not washed, the love of the father is the same. Father will love you out of your problem, out of your addiction, out of your limitation, out of your bad self. The Father loves you full stop. The last one. You know, did you see, did you see what the Bible says? It says, which is the first commandment, right? But it says, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Ish. Ish. Are you hearing me? It says, this is what? You may not be right, but you may be right by obeying. This is right. This is right. Whew. It's a commandment with a promise, as the Bible says, verse 2. This is the first commandment with a promise. Your promise of success, ladies and gentlemen, is with your parents. The promise of success. Last one. Let's cover the last one. Then I close. If I take more time, it's the Father's Day anyway, please. Uh, I'm, I'm free. I'm free. Father's Day today. I'm not sure if you're a father of if you're a father of this house, then you can leave. But <laughs> number six. It is blessed. He the father, it's to be a father is to be blessed. To be a father is to be blessed. And you are blessed to shoot your children to their destiny. Are you hearing me? This is the great thing about being a father. I don't know. Hey, guys, I don't know. I was proud yesterday when the profession, professionals were speaking here and to discover that those professionals are my sons and daughters. You have no idea how proud and how big and how wonderful I felt. Because once of the responsibility of the father is to shoot the children to their destiny is to make children to be bigger than him is to make children to be more impactful and more success than he is in the book of Psalms 127 verse 3 to 5 Psalms 127 verse 3 to 5 the Bible says see the children are, are, are a heritage from the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward like arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They will not be ashamed, but will speak with their enemies at the gate. Can you see that? So the Bible says, heritage. When we have you guys, we have inheritance already. Are you hearing me? It works the same in the physical, the father. Your children are your inheritance. You know, it works the same in the church. Your spiritual children are your inheritance. In other words, by having you seated this morning, I'm already blessed. I'm already full. I'm already favored by God that every Sunday I come and speak to you. It's a blessing.
But the Bible says that it's like happy is the man who has them in, who, 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 has, who has his quiver full of them. Do you know what is a quiver? A quiver is a bag. Oh, I don't know. It's a bag that carries arrows, that carries weapons. Are you hearing me? So blessed is the man that is full, that has full of them. In other words, these arrows, these children are led, are disciplined, are controllable, are are you hearing me? So in other words, they are not all over. They are in a certain space where the Father has put them. And they are willing to stay there until the time they have to be shot to their destiny. In other words, if you are not led, if you are not controllable, if you are not... Uh, I'm running short of words here. You see... So the man has to put them somewhere and carry them. The mighty man must carry them. In other words, you must be careable. You must be careable. You must be in the hand. You must be in the quiver. Then the man, the, 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 the man is happy when he can carry you. A spiritual father is happy if he can carry you. Are you hearing me? If he can carry you, if he can have you, if he can be able to carry you, then the father is happy. Why? Because at the right time, then he will take you and then shoot you to your destiny. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm going to my destiny. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm going to my destiny. The Bible says that the Bible says that, he, that they are in the quiver. They are in the quiver. They are in the quiver. They are led. They are disciplined. They are, they are grown. And they are, they are in the space, in the quiver. And the Bible says they will not be ashamed, but will speak with their enemies. In other words, when you are in the quiver, it gives you authority over your enemies. If you are in the quiver, it gives you authority over your enemies. And I want to prophesy before I close that every enemy that is facing your life, you shall conquer that enemy as long as you are in the quiver, something is going to happen in your life. Are you hearing me somebody? Touch your neighbor and say, I'm in the quiver. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm in the quiver. Say I'm in the quiver. Yes, sometimes I need to wait too long. Sometimes I need to be patient too long because the quiver is not easy. The quiver, sometimes it seems as if the blessings are taking too long. Sometimes it seems as if the promotion is not coming your way. Sometimes it seems as if you're not gonna get married. Mr. the right is not coming. But I want to tell you that stay in the quiver when you stay in the quiver sooner or later you are going to be shot into your destiny your destiny is coming your blessing is coming your impact is coming your promotion is coming your blessings are on the way somebody say I'm blessed Shida Kamba Sataya Kataya the reason why I know that my life is normal is not normal is because I'm in the quiver of a mighty man. My mighty man, my spiritual father. I know that I'm in the quiver because I'm in the quiver. There are things that will not happen in my life. There are arrows that will not be able to attack me because I'm protected in the quiver. Nobody can destroy me. Nobody can kill me. Nobody can Ah, because I'm in the quiver and I'm protected and I'm in the hand of the mighty warrior touch your name and say I'm in the hand Isaiah 8 the last scripture 
Isaiah 8 verse 18 Isaiah 8 verse 18 the Bible says look I and the children whom the Lord has given me the children whom the Lord has I and the children here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me we are for signs and wonders Woo! in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Sinai we are for signs and wonders one thing that I know I cannot be a father to any failing child to any person who will become nothing I know that I and my children are for signs and wonders you are a sign and wonder to the world you are a sign and wonder to your family you are a sign and wonder to your workplace you are a miracle in the name of Jesus you are not ordinary I and my children from the Lord has God has given me are a sign we are signs and we are wonders we are signs and wonders if you want to see the sign look at me if you want to see the wonder look at me I've been through the shadow of death and I survived I've been through betrayal and I survived I've been through rejection I survived I've been through poverty I survived I've been through the hospital and sickness but I survived why I am a sign and I am a wonder and Satan is still wondering why am I still alive and why am I still preaching why am I still preaching? He's wondering why is that guy? He's still preaching. He cannot understand it. But I do understand myself that I am a sign and I am a wonder. Are you sure I'm trying to say to you? Death is worried. Death is worried about you. He thought that you were going to die at 60 years. But look at you. You are still alive. Death thought you are going to die at 40. But look at you. You are still alive. That death thing thought you are going to die at 70. But look at you. You are still alive. Because you are a sign. And you are a wonder. Somebody say I am a sign and wonder. A father will make a wonder out of you. A father will make a wonder out of you. A father will make a wonder out of you. A, wa a father will make the world to be amazed when they are looking at you. A father has the power to produce you, to challenge you, to provoke you, to provoke the talents out of you, to provoke a businessman out of you, to provoke a professional out of you, to provoke an academic out of you. A father will make you to be bigger than what he is. Destinies are being altered. Destinies are being changed. You are being redirected. You are going for victory. You are going for power. You are going for influence. You are going for destiny. God is shifting you and shooting you to your destiny. The devil is a liar. He should have killed you while he had a chance but now it's too late god has you in your in his hand and you are going higher hey! yeah father we thank you we give you praise
praise and we give you honor in the name of Jesus we glorify you we magnify you we thank you for the father that you are in the name of Jesus we are so glad to be in the father's heart that you sent your only begotten son you had no other son but the only begotten but you surrendered him for our lives to be saved and for us to be sons and daughters today to you we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Somebody clap hands for Jesus.